definitely more, but is it more? Is it enough more? Is it more than enough to say that this is rare enough to say that this claim is true, that we actually are produced m are too big? How accurate do you want to be? You want to be 90%, 95%, or 99%? Seriously, you, you tell me. I'll have it written down so we can pick anything we want. 99? You'll be really sure. Okay. Fine, whatever. <laughs> so, significance level. If she wants to be 99% sure, what's our significance level? We're going to do our four steps right here, and I'll show you the difference between the p-value and the traditional, just like I normally do over on the right-hand side of the board. Now, step number one says, what are you supposed to do? Claim. Ah, claim and offset. Let's look at our claim. I want you right now in five seconds to state your claim. your claim. What letter do you use? Why not P? I did this on purpose to you. I gave you a number that's between 0 and 1 just to make sure you could still see the difference that even though this, this looks like it, it could potentially be a proportion, right, because it has a decimal number, does it have to be a proportion if it's a decimal? No, this is actually a mean. So we're, we're talking about mu. So the claim says that the mu is, let's see, test the claim that the the mu is greater than, what, greater than, how do I, greater than, like this? Yeah. No. no, what's wrong? No. Ah, that is greater than. Greater than how much? Good. Now, state the opposite if you haven't done that already. Hey, critical thinking question right here. Would we be able to prove our claim correct in this case? It's right here. It's right here. Which one is our h sub 0, the claim or the opposite? That makes this one h sub 1. So the only thing you can prove right is h sub 1. Do we have the potential for proving our claim correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do. If these were reversed, would I have the potential for proving my claim correct? Yeah. No, at that point you'd be like, why am I even doing the problem? I can't even prove it right. Oh, what's next? Yeah. Say what? Is it an identifying? Just... Yeah, it's basically doing this, just rewriting that, except you're going to have an equal sign somewhere instead of less than or equal to. It's kind of an important step, though. You, you do want to write that, trust me. It's one of those things where if you do it like I tell you, you're going to get it right. If you don't do it like I tell you, you miss some steps, you're going to get it wrong. Uh, so h sub 0, we're going to restate that. h sub 0 is this one. We're going to have mu. Tell me the next thing. Good. That equality changes to a straight up equal sign, so we can use that in our test statistic in just a moment. h sub 1, we never, ever change that. Step three is identifying your significance level. That's always going to be given to you. In our case, you already did it. It's 0 0.01. Step four is the only place you do math. That's it. Other, other than this, you're going to look up numbers in a table and compare them. So step four, you're going to find your test statistic. We're using a Z in this case because we know our sigma. So let's try to plug in numbers to our test statistic right here. Can you please tell me, what is our x bar in this case? Read through real careful. What is our x bar in this problem? 8635 eight, 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 or 8535? Eight, 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 why? Why is this our x bar? Aha, this is from the sample. So we write right here, 0.8635. Minus, what are we subtracting? 
the mu. Where do we find the mu? Where do we find the... Okay, we're looking right here, right? We've done our x bar. We got it, 0.8635. That was our sample mean. We want to subtract our, our mu. What's our mu? Hey, right there. Right, that's why we write it with the equal sign. Divided by, okay, divided by, what's our sigma? Against this population. Divided by the square root of, the square root of your sample size. So 0 0.0565 square root of, how much of your sample size? Okay. I want you to do that on your own. You gotta be able to, I can't just tell you what the answer is. You gotta be able to calculate that on your, your calculator. So go for it. So 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.0565 times the square root of 465. Or you do this first and divide 0 0.01 by that. In either case, how much did you get? 3.81, how many people got 3.81 something? Okay, raise your hand. If you have a calculator, raise your hand. <coughs> if you have that on your screen, keep your hand up. Good, okay, that, that's great. Because those of you who don't have calculators, well, obviously, you, you, unless you're a math genius, which you could be, you're probably not going to be able to do that in your head. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, between all my soapbox ranting, I, I forgot to, what did you say? 3.817. 3.817, so since it's a Z score, because that's all you can look up your table, on your calculator would be more accurate, that'd be fine. For your table, 3.82. You okay so far? You sure? You sure? You okay finding the, te the test statistic, yes? Because this is, no matter what you do, you're going to get that. Now, here's where it changes from p-value tradi to traditional. I'm going to do this step by step and alternate between them so you see what you do different. <coughs> Pay close attention to the board right now, okay? First thing you got to tell me is, do we have a left tail, right tail, or two tail test? And how do you determine that from what? <coughs> a sub 1 says greater than, oh, that's pointing to the right. So I, I clearly have a right tail test. We're going to do the p-value first. P-value first. So you tell me if I say p-value test on your homework or on your test, can you tell me what goes here? Do I put 3.82 here or do I put 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 here? For a p-value, do I put 3 point, it's either one or the other, 3.82 or 0 0.01, which one? Good, because right now I'm going to be putting my test statistic here and looking up the area in the tail. By the way, uh, can you tell me this also? Why don't I have a negative 3.82 over here? Ah, that's not two tails, so I don't need that. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what's the area that's associated with 3.82? How about, how about this better question? Tell me the area associated with the tail in 3.82. Is it 0.9999? So this is 99.9999? Oh, wait, wait. This is 0.9999. So this is 0 0.0001. Actually, it's smaller than that because it says anything over 3.5. You use that. So on your calculator, it would be a little bit more accurate. But for us, on our tables, 0 0.0001. You put 0.9999, it's going to come out way wrong. You okay so far with that one? Now compare that to this over here. On our traditional method, you don't put 3.82 here, you actually put your alpha in the tail. Now am I going to put 0 0.01 or 0 0.005? When would I use 0 0.005? Uh, 
for a two tail I have to split it. So 0 0.01, you're going to look up the critical value for that. I'm thinking it's, what is it, uh, 2.575? If you look at point zero one, you get that, right? Actually gives you negative 2.575. But you know you're talking about a right tail test. And we know that's the fail to reject region. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, back to the p-value. What is your p-value here? The p-value is the area in the tail. How much is the p-value? How much is alpha for our, our problem? Do I use less than or equal to? You remember, you, you have to pick one of these. It's one of those two symbols. Do I use less than or equal to or greater than? Sure. Am I going to reject? This is where you've got to be good. Am I going to reject or fail to reject? Definitely reject. Look at this. This area is smaller than that, right? It's rare enough. It's saying you reject h of zero. Reject. Now go back over here. Look at this one. You're gonna use your test statistic for tr traditional method. Identify where your test statistic falls. Is it a fail to reject or the reject? Reject. Three point eight three is way over here, isn't it? That's the rejection region. So you're going to, again, three point eight three is over there. You're going to reject H from 0. So p-value, you compare your p-value to your alpha. You, you're comparing areas. Traditional, you're comparing z-scores. It's the same idea, just comparing two different things. In either case, uh, you tell me now, do we have enough evidence to state our claim is true? Yes. It's either yes or no. Let's see what you did, because some of you still aren't really kind of grasping this. Did you or did you not reject your null? So you come right up here, you say which one you rejected. Which one did we reject? Did we reject this one? Did we reject this one? We rejected this one. If you reject something, you crossed out the other one's true. Okay, that's what you do when you reject. So this one's true. Is our claim true? Did you circle your claim? Did you reject the other one? So we just proved our claim. So you're going to state right now, there is enough evidence to support the claim that, and then you restate your claim. So it's either there is or there is not. If you fail to reject, there's not. If you reject, there is enough evidence. So here, there is enough, and then you're going to finish that off on your own. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the mean weight of M&Ms is greater than 0.8535 grams.